How are we? Don't be fooled by the sun. <laughs> it's a winter sun. And for me not to be in short sleeves, folks, it means it's about two degrees. Now, I've been composting earlier this morning. This is about quarter past seven. I dropped the compost. I had a load of, now this is green waste recycled. So it's composted green waste, not your mushroom compost, not your, I don't know, whatever compost you can find in the local garden supplies. They should be selling the green waste. And once upon a time, I did a lot of uh, promotions and visits to a lot of green waste sites where, you know, your green waste bins go. They compost them and turn them into organic matter so that you can put it back into your garden again. So it's recycling all the green waste. And now I found some out at our local garden supplies in Bannockburn. And it was the only one meter, one cubic meter left. And he said to me, he goes, people don't know about it. They don't like it. They don't even know. When, it, when you say green waste, they think, ooh, green waste. Well, in actual fact, folks, green waste is better than anything else. Make sure you get some of that into your garden. If your local garden supplies doesn't have it, get them to get it in. Nothing to do with me, purely the fact that I know how it's made. And it's basically a compost bin on, in a large scale. So what you have in your home, if you've got one, a compost bin, that's what this stuff is. It's already composted for you. Now, I had a meter, not even, and I dropped it on this first row, and it's about half of the quantity rate that I wanted to apply. Now, I was going to spray the weeds, and I haven't on this one here, and I only use Slasher, um, a natural form of herbicide, and I will deal with those weeds. Don't worry about my problem here, because I know how to deal with these weeds, and later on, even though I haven't slashed them or cut them. But what I'm going to show you is the compost, the irrigation, a drip line, as we have here. See this drip line? It's one line I've got here running through. Now, I do turn it on on a regular basis, not in winter, but in the spring summer period. Now, for those who've got few, a few trees, you can create a ring around your tree. You haven't got an orchard and you've only got a few trees, put a ring around your tree with a drip line or put two rows, one on either side of the actual trunk so that you can get a, a bigger spread or a wider spread of irrigation. I can do the same, I probably will at the moment. I'm happy with the one that suffices because the root system is still small. So as the trees grow, yeah, I will be adding to it. And that's the same with the composting. At this stage, I've only added a small amount of compost and I'm going to be adding more as the seasons go by. Every spring, every summer, even autumn, I'll be top dressing this with compost and mulch on top. And that's what I've got here. This is a little sample of it. I showed you this already. I've got 16 cubic meters sitting over there, and I don't think that's going to be enough to do 200 trees. I probably want about 20, 25 cubic meters. I'm going to top dress all this here, and as the journey develops and goes on, you're going to see these beds raising slowly higher and higher as the trees get bigger and bigger. And it's going to be about 900, a meter wide strip of compost and mulch. And never forget the black grit too, remember that, eh? Because that's what's going to balance it all out so you don't burn your plants. So I've got my green waste here, composted green waste, and I'm going to add my mulch on top of that. Yes, folks, no bobcat here. This is my bobcat. <laughs> So now I'm applying just a narrow mound. And as I said, each time we go through a season, I'll be adding onto it. And naturally, it'll be getting wider and wider. And this is what I'm going to do with the entire row, folks. All 30, no, it's actually more than 30 metres, it's about 100 metres. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over here and now we've got another 150 over the front there two rows of that and that's black and white genoa figs so we've got 24 figs planted over there and all our olive trees as well now that's the idea if you've got a little orchard or just a, a row of trees in your garden there you want to mulch up add your compost green waste organics is the way to go put your uh, chicken manure if you like as well or cow manure add that into it because all of that is great put your mulch on top and a lot of emails have come through asking about the insect netting, the little grow tunnels that we showed you previously on our cabbages, which are great to control the moths laying the caterpillar eggs and all that sort of stuff, and stopping the insects getting in there as well. Well, you've asked for bigger netting, and I've found some bigger netting, which is going to be ideal for fruit trees and obviously garden beds alike. But the one I want to demonstrate today is actually designed to sit over your small trees, just like this one here. And I'm going to set it up now. Yep, it's something like this, I reckon. There you go. 
All right, what we have is a 2.4 meter round by 2.8 meter high netting. It's already made to shape. And I've got these little lugs. Now, these are great. Have a look at these. Now, you, these are perfect for your typical garden stake. Triangular little corners, you know, three ends, a T section, let's call it that. So we only need four of these and we put them in frame to the height we want them. And I'll set it up here now. These are small trees. Super, that's going to be huge. This is why we say keep your trees down to a small size in height, folks, so that you can actually protect them. Look how big it is. 2.4 is here. Okay. 2.4. Okay. All right. We'll work that out in a minute. <laughs> With all seriousness, that's a decent sized bit of netting there for you. That's 2.4. It's meant to be round, I think, but I've done it square here. Don't fall, don't fall. I haven't hit anything yet. It's about to go over. All right. How are we going to do this, eh? I think I need a bigger hammer. Give me one of those frame. Put the camera down and give me one of those angle frame things behind you. You're going to step on them. All right. Give me one of those. All right. So we've got all the corners in, the T-sections. Just tap that in beautifully like that. There you go, three, two sides, one, two, actually, yeah, two sides are done. Two more. Let's cut this side off. And if your timber is a little bit undersized, so meaning it's a little bit loose, the little eyelet here on all little brackets where you can put a couple of screws in to hold it in place. So that makes sure that it doesn't fall apart on you. Done. Have a look at that. Not even a spirit level in place. Yeah, a little bit off, but that's okay. Well, folks, next stage is the bird netting. What are you waiting for? Give me the bird netting, will you? Would have been a lot easier with a ladder, wouldn't it? Well, folks, that measurement of 2.4 perimeter is incorrect. It's actually 2.4 diagonally because it's actually it's the shape of a cylinder, not a square on top. So I've had to shorten the runs. So I measured from corner to corner on a diagonal. Well, I didn't measure; I just did it by eye to get a 2.4 measurement. And that way, we're not stretching it out. Have a look at that. It's happening. Just got to clean it up, and you've got a little opening here. And remember, you just got to peg that down at the end to stop the birds getting in. For now, I'm just putting some garden stakes so the wind doesn't take it away. It's raining now. Folks, if you want to protect your garden, get some insect netting over the top. They're available on our website, vasilisgarden.com. From me, Vasili, Maresi. Hey, Cara, it's raining. Who cares? Just keep scratching me.